Hi, everybody. Tiffany, founder and executive director of Crafting Change. I want to welcome everybody to our Sunday night sip and sew uh, afternoon here in Oregon, evening on the East Coast. I want to welcome everybody no matter where you are. And Kathy Lawrence always hosts these wonderful classes. And I'm just going to turn it right over to you, Kathy. Welcome. Hi. Thanks, everybody, for spending part of your Sunday with us. Um, tonight's going to be our last class on winter wear. If you've already been making winter wear hats and want to change it up a little bit, then you'll like tonight's class. We're going to show three variations on winter wear hats. I'm going to show a fleece balaclava and a sewn fleece ear flap hat. And my very special guest, Kim Damon, is going to show us how to add crocheted ear flaps onto a regular crocheted hat. So I can't wait for that. Right now we have about five partner charities that are requesting sew, knitted and crocheted warm winter hats. Hopa Mountain needs them for infant sizes through adults. Mental Health Resource Center in Florida and Care Corps Vegas wants them for their homeless outreach programs. And East River Foster Parent Network in South Dakota is requesting for their kids ages five through 10. Uh, knit, the Rainbow, knit the Rainbow also wants them, but just knitted or crocheted, uh, not any sewn for them at this time. So I think when I added them all up yesterday, we were somewhere close to about a thousand pieces still needed. So we still got a little ways to go. But you guys have been just super wonderful in making and donating. And please know that our partner charities are so very thankful for you. Um, you've been instrumental in helping to change lives. And thanks to all of you. You are so very great. And we appreciate each and every one. Truly, thank you. So let's start with a balaclava. So what is a balaclava besides the funny word that you have trouble saying? Well, balaclava is a close fitting garment that covers the head and the neck and part of the face. It helps to hold the warmth in because the head is covered and so the heat doesn't escape from the top of the head. Now I've seen them where they come up and leave just the eyes open, but we've decided on this pattern to leave most of the face open for two reasons. Uh, one is for safety because uh, we're recommending it to make it out of fleece. So if you have one or two layers of fleece over your face and nose, that could be a hindrance for obviously breathing. And the other reason is we don't want people to mistake this or use this for a COVID face mask. It does not replace the COVID face mask. But these are really simple and easy to do. Uh, you could just sit down and crank out a bunch of these. Um, now, got the fuzzies on my hair, right? So this is the one, I just started doing them in two tones. I think the green's kind of cool on the back. And I've done the little leopard that's got the black on the back. Oh, there's a fuzzy. So you can use it in different colors together or just make one in all the same color. This is one of the kid sizes that's just all made from the same. And the pattern is really easy. Tiffany is going to throw a um, either a, a link or the document that has the links on it into the chat. So you'll be able to find where these patterns are and the instructions are to make them. Now, this for the children is a kid's balaclava. This is Charmed by Ashley pattern. And the link will show you that you've got a tutorial where you can go see the tutorial on it. But there's also a YouTube video. So if you go to the links, you can either go see the written out instructions or go to the video. And your pattern will come in uh, two downloads. Either you're gonna download, well, no, this pattern is a one download, I'm sorry. And it is both for ages three to five and six to 10. And I'll show you how that works. it comes and you cut out the four different pattern pieces and the pattern pieces has this little shaded part on it. And that's where you're gonna match it up to the other pattern piece. You see both of those say D. So you're gonna overlap those two Ds 
and you're going to tape those together. I'll do it real quick. Same way with the other one, we've got an AB and a BC. So you just take your B and put it over that overlap here on the B and tape that section together. And now you've got the top and the bottom. And guess what? Now you put the other two pieces together and tape those together and you've got the whole hat pattern. And that's all that is. But what I wanted to show you is on this pattern, it'll say sizes three to five, cut a 19 by three and three quarters, sizes six to 10, cut a 19 by four and a quarter. And this is referring to the third piece that you need, which is just that strip that goes down the back. Okay, they're not gonna give you a pattern piece for that. You just have to cut that by measurements. So what you'll have is you'll have this, that you're gonna cut two pieces out of, one for either side, and then cut by measurements this third piece according to what size of kids you're sewing it for, okay? And I figured that uh, you can get probably about three across on the width of your fabric. I know you can get three of the adult sizes across. You might be able to get four. So you can use about 15 inches for the, uh, the face and then use another about five inches for that center portion that goes down the back. So it doesn't take a lot of all uh, material at all. Now for the adults, I've drafted our own crafting change pattern by trial and error. And that's gonna come in two separate lengths. There'll be a link for piece A and a link for piece B. And on this, you're just gonna match up those diamonds and then cut it out. And I've got instructions on here that tells you to match it up, cut out A and B and then cut two of these. And then for the adult size, you're gonna cut the strip five inches wide by 20 inches long for the back strip. So there's links for these, for the adults also. And when that is all pieced together, that looks like this. So it's a very, very simple pattern. I, uh, it doesn't take hardly any time at all to sew, and so we're going to do one in a second, but I want to talk about material. Um, we know that there's different weights of fleece, and I am really keen on this anti-fleece, anti-fleece, can't talk tonight, on this anti-peel fleece from Joann's. This is part of the selvage. It's going to say either anti-peel on the selvage or at the end of the bolt, and I like it because it's a little nicer quality but yet it has the stretch that we need for this pattern. This pattern, we need stretch because it, it needs the stretch to go over your head to, to fit nice. So this is anti-pill and you see that it's got some good stretch and recovery to it. Now I've tested this pattern out with the Lux and the Lux is really kind of tight. If you had Lux, you probably could use it but you'd have to enlarge your pattern to make it big enough to pull over the head. And there's not a lot of recovery to this. So I would recommend that we stay with our anti-pill or sweatshirt fleece, but just test it because we're gonna need some good stretch to go over the head, okay? Now that we've got our patterns and our fabrics together, I think I'm gonna move my camera down so you can see what we're doing with the rest of this. So hang on a second, let me move this down and we're gonna start sewing one. It's gonna go really quick. Okay. There we go. Now, once you've got your pieces cut out, what you're gonna have is you're gonna have obviously the, the the one, both sides of your head, one right side, one left side, and you're gonna have one strip that's the back panel. And so that's all this pattern is. I didn't make any of them double because I thought the double was just like really warm, but I bet you could uh, 
but it's not what I had in mind when we picked out this pattern, but it doesn't mean you can't do it. So basically what you're gonna do is just take this back panel and clip it all the way down to the sides of the, the two sides. So you're gonna have this side seam here for the one side of the head. Then you're gonna stitch the side seam here for the other side of the head. And then just come around to the front and stitch this front seam. And you're gonna have the hat basically put together at that point, okay? And now before you go any further, remember to come back and take your scissors and grade your seam allowances all along where you've stitched. You don't wanna cut it so close that you cut through your stitches, but you wanna make it trim and so that they're not real thick and bulky inside of the head. Um, now, I think we've talked a lot about what kind of stitches that we use when we're sewing, but I wanted to show you something. Every machine is gonna be different. So you guys have to really go to your machine and test out the different stitches and see what you like, see what works, what doesn't work. For my machine, I like using just a real little zigzag. That's the one over here on the side. It's just a little narrow zigzag, but still it's got a lot of give to it. And that's, the, that's my uh, stitch of choice to be able to sew the straight seams, okay? And now for a decorative seam, like something on the bottom, when you're turning it up and hemming the bottom or turning in the face and hemming the face, I played with several different stitches on my machine. And this one over here is like a little X with a box in it. And this is almost like a flat lock stitch. If you've ever um, seen a serger that has a flat lock capability, this is almost like a flat lock stitch. So this one worked out really cool to do the hemming. Now this was like a double diamond that I thought would work well, but I need to caution you when you're playing with your stitches, this double diamond goes back and forth a lot. It comes back and forth and back and forth as it's working its way down the seam. And you want to avoid those. You don't really want to use this one because anything that goes back and forth and back and forth as it's going down the seam, it's going to stretch out your fleece and cause it to be wavy. So that was a good experiment with my machine to find out that that one doesn't work. And now the zigzag or three-step zigzag was good because it had enough width to go across uh, the turn up on the hem. And this was kind of like a serpentine stitch that I had that worked real well. But everybody test your stitches. And once you find out what you like, write it down somewhere. Um, the side to side is okay. The forwards and backwards makes it distorted. But what I'm trying to aim for, and hopefully you can see it on here. This is a turned up hem. And let me get the right side. And the hem is turned up. And right here is the edge of the hem. And what I'm aiming for is one that goes over and back and encases this raw edge of the hem. So that the hem is not flipping up and sticking up. This just makes it nice and smooth and nice and flat. And so you go back and forth and cover that cut edge of the hem and it makes a really nice finish. And again, if you do it in a, a, a zigzag stitch or, or that box stitch, whatever you choose to do, it just makes it look nice. But this was my samples that I did on my, on my machine so I could tell which one I wanted. But we're trying to avoid just turning it up and top stitching it and leaving a little bit of that hem sticking up because that probably more than likely is gonna irritate the wearer. So test your stitches. Once you figure out what you like, write it down because hey, if you're like me, you, you can forget things pretty easily. Um, my preferred stitch is a zigzag. I use a width of a 2.0, a length of a 4.0, and I lower my presser foot tension to 4.0. Now presser foot tension, 
as it was pointed out last time, is different from your uh, thread tension that's on the front of your machine. You're not messing with your thread tension unless you have to. Most of today's machines are automatic. Um, so you don't have to mess with your uh, thread tension, but my machine has a setting where I can uh, loosen the presser foot tension a little bit. If you've had an older machine, sometimes it's that silver dial up on the top, but you need to be very careful and make a mark of where it was, like maybe put a little piece of tape or a little uh, magic marker on tape, magic marker on there. So you know what the common setting was before you start twisting away on it. Because if you get it off, it's, it's, it's going to be a headache to get it back. So if you're confident that you can turn this back to where it was, go ahead and make a mark and see if you can loosen it. But if not, then maybe just use a walking foot or maybe use a helper like this stylus, this stiletto. I use this to help me through the machine and also this purple thing. I use that to help push the material through the machine and I can get her done pretty good. Now, I think I saw a question there about the fleece. Fleece does not fray, which is what I love about it. So when you're doing a hem, you don't have to turn it over and then turn it over again. You can just flip it up one time and then go ahead and stitch over it and it's done. Same way as when you're sewing your seams. This is just a one, one zigzag down here, trim close, and I don't have to do anything to finish the edge on it. So that's why fleece is so much fun is it doesn't fray and you can take some shortcuts with it. Now, This is the, the hood and I've just got that turned under. And this is where you would use one of your over stitches that you can stitch over and back to flatten it down. And that slight curve there, after you get it pinned, you can just put a, a little bit of a little bit of a roll on it and it'll just gently roll right in. You're not gonna wanna pull on this or, or pull it through the machine because that makes it wavy. So don't, don't do that. But this is a very simple one to sew. Um, I got something I forgot to tell you earlier. When you're matching up your cut face here with this inset that goes in the back, I always start up here at the top of the face curve when I'm sewing this in. And I'm sewing it in and I come to the bottom I do the same here, start sewing here, come to the bottom, because uh, when I allowed for this 20 inches for this strip, it is gonna be a little bit longer. So don't freak out that you did something wrong. When you come down to the end, you're as black on black, you can't see that. And you see how this back panel is further out than what the edge of the hat is. Here's the bottom of the hat and here's the back panel. That's just so that we've got enough room to make it all line up. So when you're getting ready to stitch that and after you have that in there, just take your scissors and cut off the excess and then keep on going, okay? So don't panic that you've done something wrong because that 20 inch, 20 inch measurement is a good amount, you are gonna have some extra, so just cut it off. And that's about all there is to this hat. I really like the two tones. I think this would be a great project for uh, using up some of your scraps. And let's see, I wanna show the one I was playing with today. Okay, come here. Remember those gloves? And we did the gloves that we put the band on the bottom of the fleece gloves. Well, I played with that and did that with the opening and it came out really cool. But if you're gonna do this, use about a two inch strip. You can't see it's on black on black, isn't it? Use about a two inch strip, sew it to the front, roll it over, and then stitch in the ditch 
so you've got it sewn down. And then I decided to go back and stitch another row of stitching about a half inch away to keep this from rolling outwards. And it really does hold it down nice. And then on the inside, I just went back and I trimmed off the excess. And so I've got a double stitch. Here's the stitch in the ditch and down there's the next stitch. But I kind of like the way this one turned out. So if you want to play around with it, I just like the way this one feels. This looks pretty good coming around and it fits well. And so I guess I just want to tell you, don't be afraid to play around a little bit with what you're doing because that's half the fun, I think, with your colors and mixing your colors. And this band on here looks kind of cool and it makes that sturdy. So if somebody's pulling this on and off, it's going to give it some reinforcement. Now I have seen some patterns too, where they go ahead and they cut this longer here and longer in the back and have it come up over the shoulders so it can be tucked inside of a coat. I think this has got a nice little band to it. But if you wanted to do something like that, that's fine too. So this is your basic balaclava, perfect for uh, your warm climates, perfect for your moderate climates, perfect for your cold climates. We've got uh, three different sizes that you can make it in and they work up really fast. And so that one was, that one's a surprise. That's a surprise favorite. I, I like that one. Now, the next one I'm going to show, it's so easy. I'm not even going to demo it. It's called the ear flap hat. And uh, this is a fleece spun hat, uh, fleece spun with ear flaps by fleece spun. Here, my buddy's got it on. I don't know. It looks like kind of an old fashioned football helmet, doesn't it? And all this is, is the pattern is a multi size pattern. Uh, three to four, five to six, 78, eight to 12. And then there's one for an adult range of sizes. And it's the one pattern, you just find your cutting line for the size that you're doing. And for the, the hat on the outside, you use the full pattern for the back. And then you cut this out here and cut one for the front. So I have made this in a double like this. And I've also made it in a single where I just went around and hemmed this. And the single worked out just great. I sent a bunch of those, um, I think to Florida. Uh, but the double would be so nice and warm for our cold, cold climates. So this is very versatile pattern too. And this is the one that is on your sheet called the fleece hat with ear flaps by fleece bun. Okay. Now my last one that I'm going to show is the fleece hat with flaps by Crafty Gemini. And of course, I had to, I am attracted to this one because I'm a Gemini, so she really got my interest. And uh, there's a tutorial that's on your sheet that you can go to, it's the craftygemini.com. Uh, there's also a link to download the pattern there. And there's gonna be a pop-up to fill in for the download but you fill it in and then click it and instantly you can pick out your pattern. But she doesn't send any spam or email. Um, or you can go to the YouTube video that's on your uh, link sheets. And if you go to the YouTube video, there's a link to the patterns in the description box under the video. And we've got on this one, I think this one's got two different, let's see. Whoops. This one has two different sizes that you can download. One is a child size and one is an adult size. So for a teenager on up, I would probably go with the adult size. And all this is, is two, two pieces. This is what you get. You'll get two pieces for the adult, or if you pick the child, you get two pieces for the child. 
And remember that you want to test your one inch square when you print to make sure it prints out at the regular uh, normal size that you need. So when you print it, you want to print it at 100%. Don't choose uh, fill the page and don't choose uh, print to page. Choose the 100% and then test your one inch square to make sure it printed out correctly. But the only thing you've got to do with this one is you've got to match up this extra little end with this. And let me show you, after you cut that out, You'll have these pieces, okay? And then you'll have this piece and this piece. So this piece I just straightened off and then you just find where this black line ends and you match it up and you tape it together. And this is your band that has the ear flaps. And if you notice on here, this says to put this on the fold. So you'll put this on the fold and then go ahead and cut this out. And this is your band. So you're gonna cut out, whoops, there, there it went. You're gonna cut four of those triangles out for the top and one of the other for the bottom. So you're gonna end up having four of these and there's gonna be four of them for the outside of the hat and four of these for the inside of the hat and then two bands, okay? Now, the first thing that I would do is with your fleece, I'm gonna shoot myself down again here. Okay, there we go. First thing that you wanna do with your fleece is you wanna find what is the right side, what's the wrong side. Now, if you remember, if you gently tug on the edge, it'll roll to the wrong side. So see how this one is rolling? It's curling over to the wrong side. So you take your marking chalk or whatever you use and put a big mark on the wrong sides so that when you're putting all of these together, you don't have them mixed up. Sometimes it's easy to see. Sometimes on the prints, it's not easy. So I just go through and mark all of mine on the wrong sides. So we've got it and there's no confusion. Okay, now you're gonna have four of these little squares let me come back to the print because I think that one might show up easier. Oh, wait, we'll use this one. You're gonna have four of these and this is going to be the top of the hat. So what I would do is take one of these, fold it in half and then put a mark where your top is Put a mark of where that very top is on your point, okay? Put your right sides together and there's really no guide on there that tells you where you're supposed to start sewing. But I wanted to try to show you here. Let me get my pointer. First time I did this, I started in about here and sewed and that didn't work. So really what you need to do is find your center and then start about here and just sew right into it around that curve. So you wanna start just a little bit past that center and start off and then sew. And I'm going to put one together. I got too much gathered up here, don't I? Okay. So we're matching it up and I'm gonna start just a little bit past where that front. Okay, 
And again, use your purple thing or your stiletto and help push your material through. And it shouldn't shift on you too bad because these are smaller pieces. Okay, so here's my two together. Two together, two by two. And then you take your two by twos, you put them together. But first I'm gonna come back and trim off some of this excess. almost forgot. And then put these two by two together with the right sides together. And at the top where that uh, seams meet, I just make one go this way and make one go that way. So I don't have a big clump right at the very top. And then I go ahead and pin that down. And when I'm sewing this, this is kind of something that you're going to probably eyeball when you get there, but I know you can do it. I just want to show you real quick. Can you see at the top what I'm looking at? You see how this top edge comes and it comes down and then it comes up? Well, that's going to look like a little dimple on the top of your hat if you follow that exactly. So what I try to do is I try to sew and cut this curve a little bit so I'm coming as straight as I can across this head. I'm gonna come up here and then come in just a little bit so I cut that curve off so I don't get a funny looking dimple, okay? So I'm gonna sew that and show you how it looks like when I get back. And I've tried this probably a dozen different ways. And there's really not a hard and fast rule in telling you how to sew that together. So you just kind of sometimes just got to wing it and go with what the fabric is telling you. Yeah. Murphy's Law says if you're going to have a problem, you're going to have it in front of a live class. So there we go. So as I'm coming up here, I'm gonna come down just a little bit and make this go as straight across as I can. And then I'll go back and just shave, trim that off. And actually we're talking about just fractions off of the hat. We're not talking about any amount of real estate that's gonna make a difference in how it fits, but it's just gonna make a little bit of difference in how it looks. So, can you guys see what I did? See how this is seam allowance is a little bit bigger right here than it is over here. That's because I'm gentling out that curve. Okay. So I'm going to come and trim that down. And this is your basic top of the hat. And you can see it's, it's got a little bit of a dimpling to it, but it's not real bad. Usually that's about how that fleece works. So you're gonna do this twice, once for the inside, once for the outside. And when you get to the band part, you're just gonna take the band and sew that back together with a quarter inch seam. And this is going to be, wait, I'm gonna move this so you guys got more room to see. There we go. You're going to stitch this as your back seam. 
because this front was on the fold. So just remember your front's on the fold and the stitch seam is the back. And next you're gonna put the band on the hat. So the easiest way that I know is just to hold this in your fist in here and then go ahead and slide this over the top of it. And you want right side to right side. Take one of these seams on your hat and line it up with one of the, with your back seam on the band. Again, have one of the flaps going this way, one of the seams going this way to reduce the bulk. And then what you would do is go ahead and clip this, clip this around, and then go ahead and stitch that on the band onto the top of the hat. Let's see, I've got another one. I've got too many pieces here. Here we go. So you've got something like this. And this is one of the hats done. See, I've got my flap down. I've got the back seam lined up with one of the seams on the hat. And so you just do this twice. You do once for the outside and once for the inside. And then the next step is just putting them together. Take one, stick it inside the other one. So I've got the lining for the inside of the hat here. And I've got the outside of the hat in here and I've got the right sides together. Now at this point, before you stitch these two together, there's two things to remember. If you want to make a pigtail and add it to your hat, this is where you would do that. And to make a pigtails, you cut material one inch wide, anywhere from eight, nine, 10, 11 inches, however long you want it. And remember, if you're not sure, you can make it long and go ahead and braid it up. And if it's too long, you can just cut your fleece off after you have it in there. So if you're not sure, don't worry about it. You can adjust it after you get it sewn in. But what I like to use is I like to use three pieces aside because that's how you can braid. And I like two of the colors and one of the solid. So I'll take a sandwich of those and at the very top I'll pin all those layers together and those just get sewn inside the ear flap as you're sewing. So on my hat I've got it pinned together and you can see on my flap where I've inserted the pigtail and pinned it up got it clipped up. So when I sew this ear flap, I sew the pigtail in there. And that's just about as hard as what that needs to be. That's not hard at all. You don't have to add a pigtail. Pigtails are cute for kids and ladies. And I'm not sure if a lot of the guys would rock a pigtail, but you never know. So if you're making a bunch of these, just do a variety because you know humans come in all different shapes and sizes. And what some would like, maybe the other ones won't like. So, you know, I try not to make them all the same. I make a wide variety of different color combinations, some with pigtails, some without. And that way, you know that they've got a variety to choose from. Now, the other thing to remember when you're sewing your hats together is that at some place in the back, you're going to leave a spot open you're gonna leave a spot open that you're not gonna sew about a two inch wide spot that you're not gonna sew. And you're gonna sew all the way around, but leave this open because then that's where that will get turned right side out. Okay? So after you've sewn that and turned it right side out, that's what you got. You got your hat with the pigtails. And then I just hold this part in order to braid this, I put this part underneath my presser foot 
and put my presser foot down so it holds it. And then I go ahead and I braid it. And when I get it as long as what I want it, I'll just put a pin or a clip in it. And then what I just did is I just sewed across here and then just kept that floppy. I've seen it where people will also take it and tie another one of these around the bottom. So it's really whatever the mood strikes you. This is an, uh, an unusually long one. And so if I was to do this again, I'd probably shorten it up a couple inches. But like I said, you don't know what people like. Go ahead and make a variety and you'll have something for everybody. Okay. Well, I kind of muddled through that one tonight. And do we have questions that I didn't answer yet? Except this does look like an old time football helmet, doesn't it? It's got the seams on it, but yet it's got the band. And I got my little pigtails. Amazing. And believe me, this is really nice and warm. So do we have questions on this? There's no questions in the chat. Does anyone want to unmute themselves and ask a question? Uh, it looks amazing and warm and snuggly. And it does not look as difficult to sew as I thought it would. No, it's it, fleece is very forgiving. Um, there's one other at the very bottom of your sheets with the links on it. I prepared a document that's got fleece hat sizings, fleece hat sizing, and embellishments. It's a two page sheet. And on the first sheet, it just gives you, if you're like wanting a specific age group, sometimes your hat patterns will tell you we'll just measure the person's head and make a hat this is a chart i found online of like the age group and about how wide the hat should be um but the second sheet has on it how to make like little pom-poms if you want to put like a little pom-pom on the top of the hat um like i said i'm not sure how that will go over with the older crowd but maybe on some of the younger ones that would be cute so this first part will just tell you how to make that little fleece pom-pom. And then the bottom part will tell you how to make the pigtails. And I've added in there on your sheets, somewhere between eight to 11 inches long, about one inch wide and three per side. And so this would be uh, that last link that's on your sheet that tells you how to do, how to do that. Okay, so. If you guys are good, I'm good. I wanted to kind of hurry along tonight because I'm so excited to see Miss Kim show us how to do the crochet on her ear flaps. Um, it's been a while since we've had a crochet demo. And so I was so excited that she said yes. Okay, Joanne Sherpa Fleece. What was the question, Joanne Sherpa Fleece? Would it be okay for which hat? I didn't catch all of that work in for the inside layer on the first pattern or would it be too bulky oh boy on this i said i was wondering if joanne's sherpa fleece if in stock would work for inside layer on the first pattern yes that one well i make this a single layer you can make it a double layer and if you do you would want to get your hands on that Sherpa and see if the Sherpa has stretch to it. I'm not familiar with it because I haven't bought it and I haven't used it, but you go to the store and make sure that it's got stretch because we need stretch to get this one over the head so it fits the curve over your head and fits the curve in, okay? And if it does have stretch, then I would say it would be fine to use it but just that's the rule for this pattern for the balaclava to make sure that your fleece is stretchy enough to go over the head, okay? And that's why we weren't recommending the Lux fleece because the Lux doesn't stretch. So um, you can make this a double. I think it'd be really, really warm. I think the one that that might be good for is, here, I'm trying to get my guy back. If you're going to use Sherpa, I think it would be awesome for this pattern. You can use Sherpa for the inside and then use fleece for the outside. This is the, the second one, the number two pattern that we, I just gave you the links for. I didn't make it tonight. 
but I think this would be cool for Sherpa. Yeah. So, yep. Yeah. Does that help? Yeah. Yeah. The Sherpa on number two sounds good, she said. And then okay. um, Susie wanted to know what size sewing needle you suggest. Well, I'm, I'm in a quandary with my needles right now. I, uh, I put in a ballpoint 14 earlier today and my machine was not liking it, but a 14 or a uh, 90, a 90 slash 14 is what I've been using on the fleece. And I just got these at, uh, where are they? Hobby Lobby. It's Chrome Universal. They say they're professional. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Maybe using them makes me professional, but it says Chrome Professional Grade. And this is a uh, universal needle and a size 14. And these work for me real well. Well, it's got a lot of light to it, doesn't it? Chrome 14, okay. Yeah. But every machine is different. So like today I put in the, uh, the knit one and it just did not like it. It took about three inches and then all of a sudden it just, oh. and so it didn't like that needle. So I took that needle out and put one of these in and it's been working like a dream. So you have to, you have to test your machine out and see what it likes and what it doesn't like. But I'd say either a universal or a knit and a size 14 worked really great for me. Now, if you're using some of that Sherpa Plus fleece to where you're getting some really thick seams, you might wanna go up to a 16, okay? But a 14 has done all of my double layer of fleece really well. Does that help? Yep. Yeah, we're good, yes. Okay, okay. Now, Kathy, I have, I have a question for you. Um, I I'm thinking about doing those balaclavas that you did first for the daycare kids. Oh, how cute. I think it would be so easy for the kids who won't leave their hats on. Yes. How small is your smallest pattern? It's a three to five, three years to five years. Perfect. Let me, see. Let me get it. I got so much stuff. No, that's mine. Where did it go? I was pretty sure it's a three to five and then there's a six to 10. So the difference between them, Kim, is you have the same pattern for this, but the difference between them is the width of this. So if it's a three to five or a six to 10, you're gonna use the same, same one of these for both kids, except one of these is gonna be smaller and one's gonna be bigger. So it's this that makes it the difference in the kids, okay? Mm -hmm. And that is, oh, where'd it go? That's printed on the pattern. Okay, here we come. Charmed by Ashley. That's printed on the pattern. Okay. They both use the same. <clears throat> this is the same for both of the kids' sizes. Except <clears throat> for the three to five, you cut it 19 by three and three quarters. And the six to 10, that back inset panel, you cut it bigger. So that's your difference between the two sizes is how big you cut that inset panel for the back. Okay. Thank you. Nope. Yep. Well, it has been just a really fun opportunity to be able to share all of these fleece sewing projects for this winter. And like I said before, we have done just an amazing job for all of our partner charities. And I appreciate you guys so much. And I hope you have as much fun making these fleece items as I have. And please, if you've got any question, Facebook me, private message me, email me, and I'll help out as best as I can for you because I want you to be successful.